And this is a crash course for people who are maybe reading the headlines, seeing things, and maybe not understanding everything. Precisely, because you you read the headlines, or or the headlines read you, right? They just go by you, and you're not you don't well, grasp it. And there are words. There's like exoplanet. You hear that yeah. word, uh, multiverse, dark matter, dark energy, and uh, and it's it's. I want the book to empower people to put all that together into one narrative. They can come out conversational about astrophysics the next morning at the water cooler. Okay, so I thought maybe we could do our own little crash course here for people who are watching at home, just so they get a little bit of an idea of what to expect in this book, why they oh, might okay, want to know okay, these things. Uh -huh. First up, why don't you explain I'm dark matter? I'm afraid what you got on that. Yeah, on that. I'm going to list because I need my talking <laughs> points. But dark matter and dark energy, what are these things and what should we be thinking about? Yes, yeah, so these are two profound areas of ignorance in modern <laughs> astrophysics. And I have a whole chapter on each of them just to get you just to get you up to speed. So 85% of the gravity of the universe has no known origin. We cannot trace it to black holes, planets, Pluto, uh, stars. There's nothing goofy. out there. Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> you finally got him to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you said Pluto. Yeah, like Pluto. I get them mixed up. Yeah, yeah, I get them mixed up. So there's no known source of that gravity. It's a mystery. Yet it's operating in this universe. So something's there. Dark energy. Yeah. There is some mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space that is working against the wishes of gravity that is accelerating the expansion of the universe. We have no idea what's causing that either. In fact, those two words are misleading because they imply we even know enough to say one is matter and one is energy. And I just want to make, have start a movement to call them Fred and Ethel or something, <laughs> or Fred and just, just a word that gives no scientific indication of what it could be because we, don't, we, we have no clue. And, and, and this, is what, this is what wakes us up in the morning, has us run to the office trying to figure this stuff out. All right, now I can sound a little smarter when I try and fit it at these things. You mentioned the word exoplanets. Let's yeah. talk about that, too, because sure. there are these seven planets that maybe could be... Oh, happening. so recently, yeah. Recently, so, see the headlines. the headlines. The headlines get you. There you go. And you want to make sense of it? It's, we talk about it in the book. The, there's a, a planetary system called TRAPPIST. It's the name of the star is TRAPPIST. We found, we, my colleagues who do this, found seven planets orbiting that star, three of which are in the Goldilocks zone, that, that place not too close, otherwise your water would, would vaporize and not too far away, your water would freeze. And so if you want to put your list of next places to visit the day we ever have a capacity to go between the stars, you put that high on the list. Let, let's talk about that because we had Kim Stanley Robinson here recently and Joe asked him the question, is it possible, do you think it's possible that we'll ever be able to travel outside the solar system? No, he, he, okay, he said next no. question. Yeah, no, he said yeah. no, <laughs> explain why, he said the same thing. It's hard to excel, you, you, we be, you know. The, the, no, no, so, so if I put you on the fastest rocket we've ever launched anywhere, right. itself, had, which had a very light payload and we're not that light, uh, it would take you 70,000 years to reach right. the nearest stars. 70,000 years. So space travel, given our technology and our knowledge of the fabric of the, the space-time continuum, space travel is far, far exceeds human physio the, the capacity so of human physiology. So why should we think that we've been visited then when they have the same physical, physical constraints? No, no, they might have, well, because we're not the measure of what is smart in the universe. I understand, and, but, but uh, maybe we're, so we could be wrong about approaching the speed of light and going over it. It's po maybe possible to do that? No, no, surely you can do it if you open up a wormhole. Oh yeah, you can easily beat a beam of light. Love it. And, and we, mathematically we can do it, but we have no capacity to do it technologically. So no reason to think, think aliens might. couldn't. Not, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 really smart aliens that would view us as uh, no evidence of intelligent life on Earth. They, they, <laughs> would have, in principle, would be able to open up wormholes and move around wherever they want. And I kept I'm thinking, how would we use wormholes first? And I came up with how you would do this. This happened once because I was at an airport, had to go from a big plane to a little plane, and I swear I walked a mile. And so I thought I was clever, and I tweeted, I can't wait till we have wormholes so that <laughs> gates can be, all gates can be adjacent to one another. And someone tweeted back, Dr. Tyson, if we have wormholes, you won't need airports. <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's> like, <"Whoa." laughs> so, so aliens would presumably have this power. Yes, yes. And so, can I say something about the dark, Please. the dark energy? Yeah. Just we'll go back for a second. Dark energy. Dark, dark energy. Matter. In a trillion years, if it does what we think it will do, it will take all galaxies of the night sky and accelerate them beyond our horizon, completely wiping clean 
all evidence that there was ever a beginning or an evolution of the universe. And that's coming to trillion that's years? Well, tr trillions in that order of magnitude. And so, well, you, what do you want to put it on your calendar? Well, because I can't <laughs> be around for this. So I'm, you know, I'm so, depressed. So if there are civilizations then, and they look out to the universe, they will not know that there's an entire chapter ripped right. from the data that they obtain in order to deduce the nature of the universe. Okay, Neil. And I, I lose sleep today wondering whether there's some other chapter that had been right. separated from us, unavailable to our data. And here we are groping, trying to find and understand the data that will tell us how the universe works. And maybe we never can and never will because we're missing pieces that some previous civilization would have known about and didn't pass down. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.